Hi guys, welcome back to Kotlin Android Development. We'll be retrieving data from API. So let's perform a request. We're going to make use of the Open Weather App API. Uh, let's see the website over there uh, to retrieve data and some regular classes for the request. As Kotlin interoperability is extremely powerful, you could use any library if you want, such as Retrofit or uh, even some networking libraries like uh, Voli for some server requests. However, we're going to perform a simple API request and uh, we're going to achieve our goal much easier without adding any third party library. So, head straight uh, down to Android Studio. But before we do that, let me just walk you through the weather map uh, so you could get uh, started by signing up, check the website, and uh, get your API key very easy and uh, from there you use that as the app ID to make requests to all endpoints. Going to Android Studio, let's try to knit up what we have initially from the last tutorial. So I'll be taking off all these. Let's knit up. And I'll be taking off this. These two classes. Now I'll be, I'll be creating two packages. So packages, call it. I'll call one uh, data, and the other I'll call it UI. Let's organize things. Oh, and I'm going to refactor. The forecast list adapter and the main activity into the UI package. So I'm going to refactor. Cool. So let's create our first class, which is going to be in the data. We're going to have our uh, requests, a request uh, coupling class, where we're going to actually I create a constructor that receives the URL uh, then the run function reads the result and outputs the JSON in the lockout. So I'm going to actually create a Kotlin class called request. request takes a private parameter while just like let we are dealing with our script string it's going to have a body so we're going to declare the run function What's this function going to do? This function is going to take the forecast JSON JSON string call on the URL, like converting that the URL string into a valid URL And we use the read text. Let me try to import this. Java net URL. So let's use the Kotlin read text. But this is good for uh, small data. When you're dealing with large chunk of data, I will employ it to use in our method. But this is good for us. Read text. So let's try to log the result of the JSON to the console for that Java class simple name and forecast JSON. Cool. We are spitting that to the console and we're going to look out 
for that when we're actually testing out. So I will implore you to follow along. Uh, the retext is cool, uh, but when we are dealing with large chunk of data, we need to modify that. If you notice, this has take, taken away a lot of a lot of boilerplate code when you're dealing with Java. Uh, when you're talking about the HTTP URL connection, the buffer reader, a lot of iteration through the JSON and back and forth, uh, you need to add the exception, and this has actually taken away a lot of stuff. So we need a permission, which is going to be internet this is the internet so actually making a new call this permission in internet internet cool so from here we could actually move further to perform the request. But you need to do that out of the main thread. As you all know, HTTP requests are not allowed in the main thread or they have with an exception. So uh, you need to actually do some asynchronous tags. And uh, you will know that async tags are dangerous and if not used carefully, uh, because the time it reaches the post execute, the system could have destroyed activity and the tags will crash. So that's the, the uh, caveats behind uh, using uh, the async tags. Now, but for using Kotlin, Kotlin has brought something very beautiful for us to use, which is the do async, uh, which is actually very beautiful. Uh, it takes away uh, the call from the UI thread, uh, which has the implementation, and it gets back uh, to the UI thread after the call is being uh, executed. So it's actually uh, taking away a lot of uh, pain. And uh, we're going to be doing that right there in the main activity where we're going to uh, declare uh, the, the, the URL and as well, we're going to uh, get the do async to actually convert that uh, for us. So let's quickly cover that now. Fine, we're still going to maintain our hard coded uh, items, uh, but we're going to be working on that later on. Now let's have our val for the URL. Which is pointing to HTTP. So this, uh, this is the API link. Call API dot open weather map dot r calling on data two point five. Cast daily. Now we're going to concatenate the app ID so this could be something, just put something there, uh, and uh, we're going to make some query. and query type for oh, and the mode should be JSON just add coding forming and the units should be metrics forming the API link. Metric and uh, is that up this way. So cool. So now we need to quickly do our do async, which is just like the async tax, but much more optimized. Now we'll make the requests. Just the request, not the download request. Let's try to import. This will 
request. On that. Now we're going to be calling. URL. And run. So getting back the response of the UI thread. Do a long toast, or we could use the toast that we had. Or let's just use the toast. Toast. We had a function, toast, and we just pass in our message called request. That's all. So you could see that Anchor actually helps us out to get these. Uh, async tax right on point so you don't really need to uh, bother about uh, when the activity is going to be queued or uh, how, how will I get a response back and uh, all those uh, glitches that comes around using the async tax so with this now you could uh, be rest assured that we begin to have the JSON and uh, which will be usable so we're going to actually do a demo let's run this and let's see that uh, right there in the log. All right, I'll be changing the tag string to on point so that it's going to be searchable in the uh, log cat. So, uh, and I've actually uh, locking the app ID, which is the API key. Get that from the OpenWeather API website. Sign in if not and generate your API key. It's the app ID. So, uh, we're going to actually run this and uh, I'll dragging up the log card so I have my device connected to uh, the system so I'm going to run that and uh, we're going to actually see the JSON body so we're expecting that to come up on point oh gotten the call to one point can you see that Look at all the JSON body. Look at it. Look at it. I could easily copy that. And see that? That's the JSON. That's the full JSON which you'll be using. So you could see that it actually uh, speed it out correctly. And uh, we're good to go. The next tutorial will be talking about how to pass uh, this JSON uh, in, in Kotlin where we'll be using classes uh, which are very cool. Uh, unlike the Java Pojo, we all know the plain object Java, uh, where we have a set and get uh, the model. Now we're going to have a kind of a model in Kotlin, and uh, we'll be creating the proper recycler route, uh, the list item, and also assign a click listener to it to complete uh, the series. But in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about how to pass this JSON. Thank you very, very much, and don't forget to subscribe to the Studios have the one.